Welcome to part 3 of the video series and this video is going to be about installing coilovers in the car and taking out the old aromatic struts um, but first of all I just want to start with where we left off in um, part 2 where I had to make the front brake inlets for uh, the brake ducts so I got my brake ducts um, and I connected them back to the brake rotor but I still have to make the inlets over here. Okay, so I have the grill here. Uh, this is the grill where the fog light mounts on the side. Uh, here's where it goes on the car. And what I'm planning to do is, um, instead of where the fog light goes, I just want to make a carbon fiber part there. Uh, so basically the air can go through that and I'll connect the steel tube at the back where my hose would mount on. So to make any composite part, first you need to make the mold for it. And the good thing about composites is that it's really easy to mold um, composites. You can pretty much mold them around uh, any material. I'm using this um, styrofoam, just because it's extremely easy to cut. Okay, so I've cut the foam uh, roughly in the shape which I want my carbon fiber piece to be. Uh, it's not really neat, it's really rough, but uh, I'm just making this in a hurry. It just has to be functional. I, uh, appearance is not going to matter too much in this. I've covered my uh, foam in aluminum foil. And that's because aluminum wouldn't stick to the carbon fiber that uh, and the epoxy that we're going to put on this. And the other thing is that the resin we use for carbon fiber actually dissolves the um, foam, uh, styrofoam in it. So the foam can't be exposed to the resin. Now uh, this is carbon fiber. Carbon, fi carbon fiber comes in a woven cloth which is basically these um, really thin strands of carbon woven into a cloth and carbon is a really strong material in terms of um, tensile strength. If you pull these strands they're really strong but it's just a cloth right now so um, you really can't do anything with it um, to make it functional to make a functional carbon fiber part uh, you need to soak multiple layers of this cloth with resin and what the resin does is it's basically a really hard plastic and uh, when you soak the carbon fiber in it and it dries it becomes it becomes really hard like this this is a finished carbon fiber piece not a really good one but Oh, you can see that it's extremely solid. If I try to bend this, it's really hard to bend. It's a really strong material. Now, because this was a really weird shape, it was really hard to uh, just get one big sheet and shape it in that. So I had to cut these multiple uh, strips of carbon fiber and just um, put them on the top of each other. But uh, hopefully when I apply the resin on it, all of this is going to soak together and um, it's not going to look too good <laughs> the shape of the carbon fiber because there's going to be weaves going in all different directions but that's okay because so. okay so I used a paintbrush to just apply the resin uh, to soak the carbon fiber with the resin and at the end I decided maybe the carbon fiber itself I didn't have enough carbon fiber so I also used a bit of fiberglass over it uh, just to make it thicker but the thing is all the layers aren't really sticking together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another piece of aluminum and cover everything with that so it just squeezes everything together. So now I wrapped everything in uh, another uh, layer of aluminum just to put, all the, put a bit of pressure on it and hold all the layers together. And <laughs> right now I have no idea what it will look like. I'm guessing it's probably not going to look too good and I'll have to do a lot of sanding to get the shape right. But uh, I'll have to leave it for I think 12 hours at least. And then I'll take everything apart and see what it looks like. Okay so after 12 hours I've taken <coughs> or tried to take off all the aluminum. But uh, the thing is some of it has wrinkled up and it just doesn't want to come off. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to send the re sand the rest of it off. Uh, the surface isn't too bad. It doesn't look too good either, but it's okay. It's just um, it's just a quick part. So and um, once I'm done um, sanding all the aluminum off and 
uh, just giving the carbon fiber a better shape I'll need to cut the excess carbon fiber off so I'm just left with how much I need and I also need to cut out a hole over here where my steel tube would go so after a lot of filing, sanding and cutting this is what the part looks like um, yeah, it's roughly the shape I wanted it to be uh, and um, after the sanding the carbon fiber gets this rough texture but here's the magic part I'm just gonna spray some clear coat over it and that's gonna bring back the carbon fiber texture not the best looking part but I was I did make this in a hurry so yeah this is pretty much the quickest carbon fiber part you can make and oh well, it's the right size and everything it will work I'll just glue this um uh, metal part onto it and it does fit in my um, thing so I'll do that next and then I'll be done this only took me I think it took me what um, less than a day to make that includes the 12 hour drying time for it okay so here's how it all looks like when it's all glued together and everything I use just uh, simple wire ties to secure everything in place uh, the glue is still wet, I just applied it. Um, and here is what it will look like from the front. So here is what it looks like when it's finally mounted on the car. <laughs> Not the best carbon fiber part, but maybe we'll get to better carbon fiber parts when I'm making my aero parts later on in the project. Uh, so yeah, the brake duct goes all the way back to the backing plate, which we made in part 2. And now that I'm done with this, let's get to the suspension. Alright, so this is one of the front air struts from the E55. Uh, comparing that to the coil spring I'm replacing it with. Uh, you can see the coil spring is much smaller, it's, a, it's slightly lighter. Uh, the air strut weighs 9 kilograms, the coil spring weighs 5.5 kilograms. So not a significant difference in weight, but still it is something. Um, so yeah, the way uh, these um, air suspensions, airmatics work is that uh, first of all there's a shock absorber going through the center, you just don't see it, you can see it in this one, there's a shock absorber going through here, um, but it's all covered in this one so you don't see it, but there's an adjuster over here that can adjust the dampening off the shock absorber, so when you have your car in um, the stiffer setting it stiffens this up, when you have it in the normal setting it loosens it up and your car rides softer. And, well, the big difference is that this one has a spring, a coil spring, like regular cars, whereas Airmatic uses air. There's an airbag inside this that compresses every time your car goes over a bump or something, and that's what gives you the, um, that's what replaces the spring, basically. Um, and the other thing is it can also adjust the height of the car using the air pressure. There's an air line that goes here, and um, if it just feeds more air into the system, you're just, this whole thing just lengthens and it makes the car rate higher so it can control the height it can control the spring rate it can control the dampening it is a pretty good system but the thing is you can't change much on it it's all controlled electronically using the um, controls that Mercedes programmed into it and but I'm gonna be replacing it with this because this just gives you much more adjustability uh, it's much stiffer um, you can adjust the height of each individual wheel, you can adjust the shock absorber using uh, this um, set setting at the top. Uh, so yeah, that's the idea behind um, coilovers. They're not, just putting coilovers in your car would not necessarily make, necessarily make it faster. It's just that they give you the ability to adjust your suspension according to your needs. And um, that's what basically would make it faster if you do the proper setup for your driving style for the track get the right balance from the car um. okay so for removing the air strut on this car the process is that uh, first you have to remove this airline by removing this nut over here then unplug the sensor obviously okay there and then open these three nuts over here and once that's done, this just falls down, and there's another, not at the bottom, I'm just going to the light. Uh, the lower nut over there that I have my breaker bar connected to. And once that's off, there's another wire over here 
that needs to be removed and after that hopefully this thing will come out okay so now the bolts on the top are out the airline is out and also the really hard to remove bolt at the bottom over there that mounts on the lower control arm that's uh, out too and also the wire for the damper this wire but now the problem is that it's, uh, I can move the suspension a little but there's still a lot of force holding it up and I think most of it most of the thing uh, that's gonna restrict it from coming down is this ball joint right here so what I'll need to do is I'll need to remove the three I could actually I could remove this nut and um, try to get the ball joint out but the problem is these ball joints are stuck in they're really hard and it's really hard to um, get it out this way and the easier thing to do is remove these three um, nuts over here and uh, just take the entire ball joint out okay so the three um, nuts holding the ball joint in place are out so hopefully it should come out when I pull it no, there. okay now the strut is out and the next step for me is to remove my upper control arm uh, this is not necessary for installing the new coilovers it's just because I want to add more camber to my front suspension so I need to take it out and um, drill the holes out. The reason I decided to um, increase the negative camber on the front is because on the last track day my tires were, um, most of the wear was on the outer wall of the tire which basically indicates you're not running enough camber, enough negative camber. Uh, so yeah that's why I'm increasing the camber by another degree. Right now it's at 2.3, uh, this will probably take it to 3.3 and um, the other thing is increasing the camber at the front also decreases the understeer which is what the car was doing on the last track day so hopefully it will improve the balance okay so i have my upper control arm in my basement now and i'm just drilling the holes i'm drilling uh smaller size holes first just so any smaller drill is going to be more accurate than a larger drill so Okay, now my smaller holes are drilled, and now I'm getting to my bigger holes with the proper size drill bit hole. Alright, so here's what the control arm looks like after the bigger holes are drilled. Um, now I just need to take a filer and file out that middle section between the two holes, this section. So after a fair bit of filing, here's what the upper control arm looks like. And now there's a fair bit of adjustability. Okay, so now the coilovers are installed. Uh, here's what it looks like. I've also painted my brake calipers yellow. Uh, so after installing the coilovers, you'll have to maybe raise or lower the car a few times just to get the height adjustment right. Uh, the top adjuster is for the spring preload which um, increasing the spring load preload will also raise your car and the bottom one just increases the overall length of the coil spring so yeah basically the height adjustment should be done by the bottom one the top one is so you can decrease the extension of your rear wheel extension is how much your wheel uh, lowers when you raise your car up all the way for now I've left the uh, damper adjustment at the softest setting but I'll adjust that later on when I start driving my car and I've made my camber adjustment already you can see that the bolts are quite a far way back from the original mounting place now the main problem was after I put these coilovers in and disconnected my airmatics the front airmatics the back of the car dropped all the way down to the floor because um, the airmatic, um, well, it shears assist. It shears a common. Um, it shears all the common air pressure lines, and when you disconnect one line, there is no pressure in the system anymore, so it doesn't work. Uh, after pulling out most of the rear suspension apart, what I realized was that these coil springs, there was just no way they're gonna fit in this car. Um, this is the um, air spring that originally fits in this car and this is the coil spring that came with the kit it's just not compatible with this car i think it was made for the e500 or the e320 the models that come without the air suspension 
with my earmatic disconnected uh, this system doesn't work anymore the earmatic system doesn't work and with these coil springs not fitting in the car the car is pretty much stranded right now uh, so part four is going to be all about making the rear suspension work there's going to be a lot of custom fabrication involved i'm thinking about going with push rod suspension which is going to be really hard to make on this car and most of the things are actually going to have to go in the trunk because there's no space over here to uh, mount the push rod suspension so it's going to be a really difficult job but all that is to come in part four